patients. So today I'm here to help you understand one of the most critical aspects of training or drilling, which is how to perform drills or exercises, or basically an approach to how to perform drills or exercises. Not everyone is built the same, and not everyone moves the same, but the foundational principles are fairly universal. I have my methods of coaching and performing any exercise well, which is set by five steps. These steps are foundational in nature, so each one builds upon the previous step and creates the tools you need to perform any exercise with excellence. Now, our habits in training and exercise, our habits of doing an exercise, really improve the nervous system. So, the better we perform them and the more consistently we perform them well, the better and easier it is to make that habit. Uh, going to step one is positional organization. This means that I need to perform an exercise. I need to be able to understand my optimal position to allow the next steps to fall into place. This may be upright posture or supine position with spinal flexion. No position is perfectly universal to every exercise or every position. For instance, a squat is typically a good go-to when we're discussing exercises because it's a part of any important strength program, exercise program, and so understanding that we positionally need to have a good upright and aligned spine, good vertical stacking so we're not, you know, flexed and rounded in the back, especially if we're loading the barbell, stuff like that, it sets up the success for the rest of the systems to work correctly. Uh, like I said, it's not universal, so my organization for the exercise is not going to be universal. I can't do the same thing in the squat as I do in a hollow hold. So like in a hollow hold, we have to go into a very flex spotting position, really tight and hinging, and setting myself up for success to be in full position. Now step two is stabilizing engagement. How can I engage the muscle to support the position? maintain it, and if the exercise requires a movement pattern, can I keep the engaged system engaged the entire time? For instance, the squat, as you'll typically hear me refer to often, can I keep my glutes and core engaged? Can I keep them turned on the entire range of motion so that I can stabilize the hips and the thorac thoraco thoraco of our spine? That's tremendously critical. If we want to move and move well, we need to be rigid and stabilized. The less stable we are, typically the more compensated our movement will be. We may have things like mobility restrictions and stuff like that that create the inability to perform the desired range of motion, but we can work on improving that range of motion. When we look at force output in relation to athletics or in relation to developing strength, when you look at force, the typical equation is force is weight over distance. So me as a 5'5 guy, I'm short. If I deadlift 300 pounds, I'm actually producing less force than someone that's 6 feet tall and also deadlifting 300 pounds. And that's because his weight over distance is going to be probably much longer than the limbs, longer torso. His waist is going to be up higher in his finished position up higher so his force production is actually going to be higher. So going on that, that force is weight over distance or weight times distance equation, if I can only hold a good position and get a barbell to just fold my kneecaps for a deadlift or only be able to squat to here for a squat, let's say that that's a 12 inch measurement, okay? If I can get that to two feet, that force is exponentially multiplied because we go from 12 by whatever weight I use to 24 by the same weight. And so you'll see that force production improve dramatically. So sometimes if we're restricted in movement, but we can't do a certain portion well, if we just focus on trying to do a little bit more movement at a time with the same weight, we'll actually still get stronger. And also this helps to improve the repeatability, which we'll get to later in this video. So step three is understanding the movement line. Although not completely universal for basic fundamental movements, I usually refer to this as pretty linear, because if we're performing a posturally challenging exercise like a squat or a deadlift or a barbell exercise, the external load typically requires a straight line. 
the straighter the load line, typically the more stable the environment and the more stable the movement. This also turns into the more power available for expression in the exercise. One of the great things about step two is that if we are good with our stabilizing engagement, step three should fall right in place without much difficulty or without trying to add too much more to it. Our load line can be different. In a bodyweight squat, we think of our load line being, you know, in the top, kind of like our ears, and at the bottom, our mid ankle. And so if I'm rotating to the side, I'll, I'll add in a line for this one. If I'm in a good low position, I should have a straight line straight from my ear down to the middle of my foot. Ideally, you know, not everybody's built the same. For some of us to achieve that, some of us might need to go into a really wide position if we've got really wide, you know, really long femur, um, different proportions in our limb lengths and stuff like that. But trying to find and understand that load line is tremendously critical. Now, if I go into using a barbell for load, that's going to change my load line. If I go into using a barbell for load, my load line is going to be centered around how well that barbell is moving straight up and straight down. And so if it's on my back, that's going to be my straight line. So I want that barbell over that center point of my foot where I should establish my point of balance or my point of reference for how I push through my foot. Step four, uh, this is probably one of the most challenging. Uh, rep tempo to your breathing. Most people get this backwards and breathe through their, breathe to the repetition. Understanding how to breathe in an exercise is critical to step five, which is repeatability. In performance, the ability to make each rep or movement cycle identical is what can make or break a performance. But if I can't breathe in a consistent fashion, it can really disrupt absolutely everything. And this is really critical for us being able to move better, perform better, express power better. When we think about breathing, we just think about it supplying us with the ability to one, stay alive, but to not feel like we're going to have a heart attack uh, in the middle of our set. Sometimes we go through these very exhaustive uh, anaerobic exercises that still create an oxygen deficit because we don't really focus on how we breathe. What I like to do, and this is actually kind of similar to the, the tap fit system, is really emphasize reps to your breathing. So at, if you have a set of eight on your squat, you're not going to try to hold your breath for the first three reps just to stay stable and then just try to breathe and maintain while you're going through. I'm going to take and reset each rep. I'm not going to be in constant motion up and down while I'm doing my squat work. I'm not just going to go one, two, three, each rep, I'm going to try to have a powerful expression of force with a powerful expression of breathing. So I actually prioritize my breathing to help with my intra-abdominal pressure to stabilize my torso, to be able to breathe out and move quickly on my concentric phase of movement, which is typically where we need to have our explosive reaction to. Uh, eccentric phase? control setup position of power for the concentric phase. So on a squat, this would look like this. So I take a big breath in, fill my belly, get that tension in the abdominals, squeeze the glutes, come down, and I'll breathe out quick, I'll breathe out hard so that my abdominals contract while I'm coming up. And I brace it almost like I'm getting prepared to get hit in the stomach. And this is a really good reference for how to breathe and how to keep abdominal tension when doing so. And so, same thing with the deadlift. I'm going to come in my hand, I'm going to take a breath in, come down. <coughs> and that expression is critical. It helps you express more power, it helps you mentally in trying to push harder through the floor to be able to return your posture where it should be and be able to make the reps repeatable. Once we start breathing just to breathe because we're suffering in our work, this really hurts us more than it helps us.
So as you heard in step four, step five is repeatability. It is the establishment of consistency in our execution of an exercise or drill. Think of this, repetition. That's what we do in a set, typically, right? This word is founded in repeat. To repeat something correctly is to make every movement cycle and training identical and hopefully falling in line with steps one through four. If one of the steps one through four ends up breaking down, this can make number five practically impossible. Um, in, in doing this, I will oftentimes coach my athletes to not mimic, but repeat. So getting back to, so what I tell my athletes is to not mimic a movement, it's to repeat a movement, repeat an exercise. That exercise cycle should reset with every single repetition. We have to have a conscious effort in our performance. We have to have a, a focused effort in our exercise. If you can't focus on what your body's doing in your exercise, you need to learn that habit because that habit can set you up for long-term success or long-term failure. If you can't learn to be in that moment and prioritize and focus in that moment for what your task is at hand, then that shows a big issue with probably the rest of your life. When you're at school, are you thinking about school? Are you doing school? Or are you wishing you were out of school? Don't worry about everything else outside of what you're doing because that could be what hurts you more than helps you. Now, as I conclude this video, talking about organizing steps one through five, take them one through five. Start at number one and go to number two, number two to three, three to four. And we put them all together if you want to perform well. This goes universally for any type of sport, any type of exercise, any type of execution physically. And so the better we can make this a habit, and the better this becomes natural and ingrained in your nervous system, the easier and easier it is to train, the easier and easier it is to get your good work done, and the better and better you're becoming. So hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys soon.